What is going on guys? Welcome to Programming in Prologue Part 2, brought to you by The Simple Engineer. Previously we looked at rules, uh, facts, and queries. Today we are going to be extending our knowledge into variables, questions, compound questions, uh, a more in-depth look at rules, as well as structs. So without further ado, let us get started. We will be first looking at variables, and I've gone ahead and programmed a simple program to demonstrate this. So let's go ahead before anything and compile this program. So I have SWI Prolog opened here. Go ahead and compile it. No issues. Okay. So now we're. Uh, Basically, I created a uh, fact base or a database of facts using this basic structure. So I have weather, I have some city, season, and temperature. So if you see here, Phoenix is hot in the summer, Los Angeles is warm in the summer, and Phoenix is warm in the winter. So now if I go into SWI Prolog, I can start using variables to basically return certain data. Okay. So what variables are, are they're essentially just placeholders. They don't actually allocate any memory in the computer. They're just simply used as placeholders. And they allow us to ask more complex questions. So you see I'm in SWI Prolog. There's the question mark. It's basically prompting me to ask some question under certain parameters. So we'll go ahead and do that. So let's say I want to print out all the cities that are hot in the summer, okay? Well, variables are denoted by a capital letter. Anytime you're using a variable or you want to implement a variable in a prolog program, it's denoted by a capital. So I can say city uh, is hot in the summer, okay? And it should return Phoenix, which it does. And I can do the same, say, print out print out all the cities that are, let's say print out all the warm cities, okay? Well, that would mean that we're not caring about the season. We just wanna print out any city that is warm. Okay, well to do that, we use something called a don't care or an anonymous variable. And it's basically just a placeholder to say, we don't care what the season is in this example, we just wanna see all the cities that are warm. So we have LA is warm and Phoenix is warm, disregarding the season, okay? And that covers the basic idea of questions and the usage of variables to return certain data under specific parameters. But now if we wanna get a little more um, intense about the question asking, we can ask compound questions, which combine two questions. They must be uniform or match some fact or else it will return false or not not return any data. So let's take an example. So we want to print out all the cities that are hot in the summer and remember the logical operator for and in prologue is a comma. So all the cities that are hot in the summer and cities that are hot in the summer with and warm in the winter. Okay. Just made a little typo here and mix these up. This should be city summer hot and city winter warm, not warm winter. Okay. So now we have city is Phoenix. So Phoenix is hot in the summer and Phoenix is warm in the winter. And you can see that in our fact base that that is true. So that is kind of how you implement a compound question. You're saying make sure these parameters are true for this, and if these parameters are true for this, then return whatever the variable is looking for. Okay, so that covers variables. We covered some basic questions and compound questions. Now let's take a look at rules. Now rules were covered in the previous video but not as in depth. So we'll go ahead and do that. If you aren't still familiar with rules, just remember that they show some relationship between objects and 
variables. Now, they do follow a specific structure, um, which I'll go ahead and overview here. So just to remind you guys, we have rules. And on the left hand side, we'll have some relationship relationship and we'll have you know our parameters we can have an object or we can have multiple objects okay and this is denoted by the head this will be the head of the statement and then we have if denoted by the operator of a colon and a hyphen this is our if statement so we're saying this okay if and then on the right hand side we'll have another relationship as well as an object or multiple objects period and this will be our body so this is like any logical expression you have your head condition so this will happen if and then your body okay so we'll go ahead and look at an example for rules over here in my program so I went ahead and made this program and it's similar to the previous one and we'll go ahead and compile it there may be a couple warnings in this program but it is nothing that will hinder the compilation okay nope no errors okay so everything compiled fine now we want to uh, take a look at what we have going on here we have two facts we're saying Phoenix is hot in the summer as well as Los Angeles is warm in the summer okay and we want we have a rule that will print out some string of text if and only if city one is hot in the summer and city two is warm in the summer and what that's proving is that city one is warmer than city two so obviously hot is a hotter temperature than warm so we already know from the fact that Phoenix is warmer than Los Angeles so we'll go ahead and test that with our rule so we're saying warmer than we'll say is Phoenix warmer than Los Angeles and it says true Phoenix is warmer than LA and why is that true because we're taking the two variables C1 and C2 okay so it's saying in our left hand side this would be our head or or our start of our expression and then if so city one is warmer than city two if and only if city one is hot in the summer and city two is warm in the winter okay and if that's true we're going to write this statement now taking a look at this write statement we're saying write the variable city one to the console so we're replacing city one with Phoenix because that is our parameter and noted by this comma write this string of text with two single quotes is how you uh, enclose the string of text you write to the console and write and then the C2 variable comma in L in L just means new line and it'll add a new line at the end of the text and in the sentence cool so that's how you do basic rules in prologue using variables using certain parameters based on your question and printing text okay now we'll cover our last idea which is structs okay so structs are basically used to simplify or organize the overall look of your code and I'll go ahead and write a quick example in prologue or uh, sublime here so I'm go ahead and erase this let's create um, a struct for our courses in school so say we have a course and the course is called CSE 110 we have the class on Monday and Wednesdays we have it at 11 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock p.m. We also have it at 11 o'clock a.m. on Wednesdays at 2, 12 o'clock p.m. The instructor is Bryce Holton, and we have it on Mondays in core, 
105, and on Wednesdays we have an Encore 321, and then we end it. So what do you notice at this statement? You notice that it's very long, it's kind of hard to read, and there's a lot of just miscellaneous text. So we're going to simplify this using what we call in Prolog structs. These are also very common in C++ and other uh, object-oriented languages, but in um, Prolog, they're not that different. So we would rewrite this. Okay, so we would say course, opening parenthesis, and we could tab it out here. And we would say we have CSE 110. We have it on the day of Monday and Wednesday. So you can see we threw this in a fact here. We threw this in a little pair. And we have it during the time of 11 and 12. And the professor is Bryce Holton. And it's in the building core 105. And that's all we have. End it. We just organized all of the data for our struct in this nice looking format. Very easy to understand, okay? But we need to go and fulfill the other requirements of this course. So for CSE 110, Go and take a look. CSE 110, we have it on Monday and Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we also have it at 11 and 12. Professor is still the same. However, it's in a different building. It's in core 321. Okay, and this satisfies the struct built for the Wednesday class. So we have a course here for CSE 110 of Mondays. And Wednesdays, they satisfy these requirements. It's a very easy to use format, easy to understand. And hopefully that kind of helps you learn how to organize your code a little better versus this long string of text that's completely unnecessary. All right, guys. Well, it looks like we covered um, variables, questions, and compound questions, as well as rules and structs. If you have any further questions, you can feel free to message me or comment on the video. Hope that helps and hope you guys have a great night.